In the past, water bottle rocket rules were changed every year to include either a minimum or maximum rocket height. This was to ensure that teams designed their own rocket and weren't tempted to reuse a rocket from last year. Our rules committee decided that this was inhibiting experimentation and creativity and probably preventing rocket designs from being as good as they could be. So, rocket height restrictions have been removed from the rules. Also, until this year, we followed the lead of other science Olympiad tournaments and prohibited the use of superglue. The rockets are pressurized when they're launched, so we don't want to compromise the strength of the blow-molded PET bottles. It was thought that some adhesives, especially the superglue, would react with the plastic and create a weak area that might rupture when pressurized. We decided to conduct our own test and see how big of a problem this really was. We tested several different glue types that a coach would easily find at a hardware store. Every brand was tested in two different areas. One test area was located on the blow mold separation line because we were trying to find a weak spot. We weren't actually constructing a rocket. We were testing how the bottle would react to different products, so we applied much more glue than a team would use. The bottles were proven at 100 PSI before we used them for testing. The tournament launch pressure is 75 PSI. For this test, we glued pieces of a CD disc to the bottle, pressurized to 90 PSI for one minute. We started with the evil super glue that had been specifically prohibited in the room. With an extra thick coating spread on two large areas, it was sure to fail. Well, maybe not. Gorilla Glue was next. This stuff makes a mess, but it sticks to anything. And it doesn't harm the bottle. This two-part epoxy also mixes. But it doesn't affect the bottle. Cement used for PVC plumbing actually dissolves the fittings and pipes and fuses them together. But surprisingly, it didn't attack the bottle. We consulted a chemical engineer, and he thought that glues that contained MEK, like this fabric and plastic cement, could be a problem. But it wasn't. Loctite construction adhesive was easy to work with. Silicone. Rapid fuse product is easier to use than super glue. Better wear gloves or you're going to glue your fingers together. By now we're determined to see a bottle fail, so we tested high temperature hot glue. The heat severely warped and distorted the bottle. But it straightened up when pressurized and amazingly it didn't leak. We scuffed the surface of the bottle with sandpaper we painted some areas with super glue and other areas with fabric and plastic cement that contained MEK. Now to be sure we had a dramatic finish to our test, we crushed and twisted the bottle to try and create stress points and weaken it. Then we increased the air pressure to 110 PSI. The mangled bottle was crumpled and repressurized several times and we never did see a leak. So now you know why we're very confident in removing the glue restrictions from the rules.